When you look at these pictures now mm -hmm. of Gypsy Rose, would I'm glad she's my fucking dead. I mean, not really, but I mean, honestly, you got a, a lovely little girl, and and then to the point where she decides she's going to kill her mother. Because I think that she felt that's the only way she could survive if she did that. Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, your very own personal board-certified criminal defense lawyer. I'm here with our content genius, as you know, Michael Rivers. So we're, today we're going to react to Gypsy Rose. And Gypsy Rose is a case of uh, Munchausen syndrome by proxy. And we'll tell you a little bit more what that means. But before we get to that, this is brought to you by eSign.com. eSign.com is a very effective way to remotely do business. For example, let's say you need a prescription for your daughter that doesn't have any kind of ailments, but you can't go out of the house, and you need to get a doctor, you need to get all this stuff done, well, you, you can do everything by eSign. eSign.com is a very effective way to remotely do business because that's what I use it for, but you can use it for any kind of document. You can use it for a uh, power of attorney, you can use it for any kind of document that you need signed quickly. So if you have a business and you have a business agreement you need to sign ASAP, you don't need to have a meeting. You can just email it to them and have them e-sign it. If you download the app, you get three free signatures a month. So make sure you visit e-sign.com. Let's talk a little bit about Munchausen syndrome by proxy. It's really fucking sad when, when that happens. Um, Munchausen syndrome by proxy is where you are a parent, generally speaking, it's usually a parent, but it could be anybody caring for another person. And you make up ailments for the for the person, and you and you have take them in for fake treatment, and it can be devastating to the person because that person's either made sick by other conditions, and then you bring them into the hospital, or you subject them to treatments that don't exist. So you take an otherwise healthy person and you subject them to all kinds of abuse. And so this Gypsy Rose uh, was treated by her mother for a bunch of conditions that didn't exist. She was made to believe that she had uh, muscular dystrophy, um, was made to walk with a fucking walker. What the hell? How does that happen? She put her in a wheelchair. She's had exploratory surgeries done. And... It was just a constant barrage of treatment for nothing. And, and it's just, it's really sad. Now, Gypsy um, started dating somebody online. She met him once. And then on their second meeting, he decides to stab the shit out of her, out of her mom. So she didn't stab her mother, and she did eight years in prison. But honestly, I think if she would have stabbed her mother... There's a thing called battered spouse syndrome. You can, I, I would, I would foresee kind of a similar um, type of defense because you can only put up with so much, and you really, she's putting your life at risk. We'll talk more about what she did and, and stuff, but let's let's kind of get in her own words, see what, and I'll react to it in a second. In her first interview after leaving prison for her role in the murder of her mother, she sat down with 2028. See, look at she's in a fucking chair. You got her mom there, all big, fat, and happy, and you know, and 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 it's it's because it, it's a psychological condition where the, I think they need to feel important in the child's life, and they and they cling to that dependency because if the child's not healthy and all of a sudden grows up and doesn't need them anymore, that destroys you know what's inside of them. And keep in mind. As a result of this fraud that she's perpetuating, I mean the mother, they're getting sympathy publicly, uh, gifts from Ronald McDonald House, uh, all kinds of Make-A-Wish Foundation, all kinds of things. And she, the mother kind of becomes this noble character in this novel and getting all this adulation. So it's all, it's feeding this psychological bullshit. I share my story to be a cautionary tale so that the next person that might be in a situation like mine, they don't take the route that I did. Gypsy. She's now on parole. She was in prison for eight years, just got released. 
Betsy Rose Blanchard is finally tasting the freedom she's long dreamed of. Tell me about the day you stepped out from behind the prison walls. You don't realize how much you're restricted in prison. I felt like I was in a black and white world and I just stepped into Technicolor. Um, it, it was amazing. Her world shifting after spending nearly nine years in prison for helping plot the murder of her own mother. Gypsy, a victim of her mother's psychological disorder, commonly known as Munchausen syndrome by proxy, in which parents seek sympathy through the exaggerated or made up illnesses of their children. Since childhood, Gypsy's mother, Dee Dee, portrayed her daughter as frail, disabled, suffering from multiple illnesses, including leukemia and muscular dystrophy. Imagine that. I mean, how fucked up do you have to be as a parent? I mean, we're supposed to protect our children, you know, and, and it is really sad and, and, and it can be fatal in some cases. But you got a, a lovely little girl and, and then to the point where she decides she's going to kill her mother because I think that she felt that's the only way she could survive if she did that. Subjecting the girl to life in a wheelchair, a feeding tube, and unnecessary. Okay, look at this fucking picture. She's got tubes all over her fucking face, and so does her little stuffed animal there. And how the hell didn't the medical community see something different in her? You know, and and my understanding is that she went from place to place to place. Mom, what, guess what happens? She goes to one doctor, and the doctor is on to her. Then she goes to another doctor and to another doctor. Different town, different town, different town. Nowadays, there's more electronics in terms of in terms of medical records and people knowing what everybody else is doing, especially in the uh, prescription area. But and, and and you've got unscrupulous doctors too who are out to get oh oh let's do a procedure. It's, that's more money in the coffers. Tell me that doesn't happen. You know goddamn well it does. Necessary surgeries, even having some of her teeth removed. It was all a lie. When you look at these pictures now mm -hmm. of Gypsy Rose... It would I'm glad she's motherfucking dead. I mean, not really. But, I mean, honestly, it, it just, it's infuriating. And here's the, here's the kicker on this. This shit all happens behind closed doors. You know, it's just the mom and the daughter there. Nobody fucking sees what's going on. And makes it very difficult to prove. What do you think now? I, I don't even associate with that little girl anymore. Do you recognize her? I don't. Like, I know that it's me, but... I... That's a healthy thing, to be honest with you, that she disassociates. At the same time, that isn't me anymore. Your mom has been portrayed as a monster. I don't believe my mother was a monster. She had a lot of demons herself that she was struggling with. I didn't want her dead. I just wanted out of my situation. And I thought that that was the only way out. In 2015, Gypsy says she reached a breaking point and plotted with a boyfriend she met online, Nick. That's a nice looking guy. <laughs> Fucking hey. You know, I mean, and, and I, I attribute, you know, a lot of malice to the mom. And maybe I shouldn't, you know, I mean, maybe I shouldn't. Because uh, it is mental illness. I mean, Munchausen syndrome by proxy is a diagnosis. I mean, it's, it is a mental illness. But God damn it, when it comes to uh, children and abuse, fucking it, I just, I, it just grates on me, you know, uh, because I, it just, uh, who wants to see a child harmed? Let's go to John to kill her mother. Gypsy would later plead guilty to second degree murder. Go to John was, hey, I have an idea. <laughs> what the fuck? Just a quick reminder that we're also sponsored by Step One and I am a fanatic about Step 1. I've been wearing them ever since August, since my trip to Alaska. I wear them every day. You, you don't, they've got the Lycra panels so you don't uh, chafe. They're made out of a viscose material derived from organic bamboo so you don't sweat. And they're super comfortable. I'm wearing them right now. Order some of these right now. And if you do, you get a 30-day guarantee. So it's, it's a risk-free proposition for you. And as you check out in Bruce Rivers in the promo code, and you get a 25% discount. You guys get that, and I've secured that for you. That's something I'm bringing to you as uh, loyal members of this community we call CLR. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, so this you couldn't get him a better gift. They've got him in all kinds of different colors, sizes. Even Gypsy Rose's husband could, could get some. And I think he does wear Step 1s, actually. 
And uh, and so you get a couple pair, and if you like them, get a whole bunch more. Step one, get some. He's convicted of carrying out the stabbing death and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Is it fair that he is incarcerated for life for killing your mom and you're out? Well, I'm sure that we both have a lot of regrets. All I can really say is that I did my time. He's doing his time for his part. Um, and I wish him well on his journey. During her prison stay, public fascination. On his journey on his bottom bunk as Bubba decides to make him. With Gypsy exploded, her story portrayed in multiple documentaries and a drama series, The Act. I'm so trapped. And I can't tell anyone. Think about, you know, a, a child can't do a whole lot on their own, right? Especially a younger child. So one of the one of the control mechanisms that her mother did was confusing her about her age. So when she was 18, mother convinced her that she was 14. You know, and why did she do that? Because when if she was 18, she'd be free to go away. And she needed to keep that control. Think about how how vulnerable you are as a child to begin with. You know, I mean you can't choose where to go or what to do and and then all of a sudden, the hell that she was in. Prison probably was better for her than her old situation that she was in. Gypsy now sharing unscripted personal details about her past in a Lifetime docuseries, The Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. You say that you were addicted to painkillers. Mm -hmm. How serious was this addiction? You know, this is, this is really hard to talk about um, because it took me down a really dark path. Um, but I felt like it was my only way to cope for a time. So when you made this decision to take part in the killing of your mom, were you high? Yes, I was. And do you blame that for your decision? No, no. Um, I don't you, can, you can be addicted to pain meds, and, and eventually you're just taking them so you don't get sick depending upon you know, if they're opiates or whatever. So they don't really have that same effect like you get high, high, you know. I don't blame drugs. I don't blame anything. I don't make excuses. And now? And now I'm sober. Now I haven't, I haven't used in four years and I don't feel the- Man, let's just back that up. I haven't used in four years. Where were you four years ago? <laughs> in prison? Did you use in prison? Need to. Hey everyone, this is Gypsy. I'm finally free. Her journey sparking a cult-like following online. Do you feel any conflict with that? You've got fame? Even though you participated in a murder? Of course. This, you know, what I don't like about this reporter in, she's making it sound like it was just some cold-blooded killing. And it wasn't a cold-blooded killing. This was an escape. This was somebody who was being abused on a regular basis. And it was, she, like she said, this was her only way out. Of course I feel conflicted. Um, fame is not what I'm looking for. Um, I always said I think I'm infamous, and then I came out famous. You've had shots of your selfie out mm -hmm. of prison. You've commented on your <laughs> love life. Are you enjoying the attention? Honestly, I'm a very shy person. I don't think that I'm doing anything that anybody... Here's the thing. She was in prison before she went to prison. She was in a hell. Uh, I don't begrudge her one bit. Uh, honestly, I just don't. And, you know, and I, and I know that the Munchausen syndrome by proxy is uh, a mental illness, but at the same time, it involves the destruction of a child some people just need a good killing. else wouldn't do. I'm being myself. Ryan Anderson, her new husband who wrote Gypsy in prison, was waiting outside the prison doors after his... Winner, winner, can I just tell you guys something? If you are writing to somebody that's in prison looking for your next soulmate, go to therapy. Go to therapy, because you could find somebody else. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with her or whatever. I, I do have some sympathy for Gypsy Rose. But uh, if you're writing somebody in prison looking for your next soulmate, do something else. 
his wife's release. Oh, I missed you. I missed you too. But you're really together physically for the first time. Yes. Uh, we call it newly together with. What are your plans? Do you want to have children? We've talked about starting a family. We just don't know when. And what kind of medical care do you think you'll give your children? <laughs> How about some unnecessary back surgery? No win at this point. Um, our lives are pretty hectic right now. So this is your happily ever after, the gal. Our lives are pretty hectic. Yeah, I got to report to pro uh, parole officer every, you know, every week, and got to make sure I do my UAs, and yeah. Oh, who liked being a princess? It is. Yeah, I had to kiss a couple frogs to get to this one. Handsome face. Oh. My heart goes out to her in a way, in a big way actually, because, you know, she was in prison with her mother and it just she her mother could have taken her life really and i i i don't agree that that the boyfriend should have gotten life i think he probably should they're they're mitigating circumstances here this isn't this isn't like um like they killed them for money or they uh you can't take a life i mean doesn't quite meet the criteria for self-defense, although it is kind of a self-defense case. But, you know, it seems to me something short of life would have been sufficient but not greater than necessary to achieve the objectives of sentencing. Evidently, she's going around making the circuit. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, what else is she going to do for fucking work? You know, I, she's not qualified to do anything. She's never worked a day in her life, I don't think. And um, so uh, there's been some criticism, criticism about the publicity. So let's see what this interview has to say. It's about six minutes. Billy Woods, so cute. I'm rocking that new ring too, I, I see, know. Gypsy. This was actually his mother's, so. Did you kill her too? <laughs> this passed Hello. down to me, so. Uh, it was always meant to go to my wife, so. And it fits perfectly. It didn't need to be adjusted at all or anything. Well, I guess it was just meant to be. Meant exactly. to be, right. Exactly. Yeah. So how is it now being a newlywed couple in the real world, outside of prison. We call it a newly together with. Yeah. Right? You know, because we've been married a year and a year and a half. Year and a half. Year and a half. Right. So it's newly together with, but it, it's yeah. it's nice. Like it's what I've been waiting for. But was the transition difficult? I mean, for a year or so, you guys were married behind bars. Mm -hmm. Now you're newly together. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many other prisons I have written to looking for a wife? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just think it's funny. Uh, so what, what's that transition been like for the two of you? I mean, baby, what, it's been five, six days? Yeah, but so I So we're just, still learning each other. Yeah, the transition know? has been pretty but simple been right now, but it's, um, like, I cleaned out his closet and put my clothes in it, and okay. um, I'm just kind of... I had kinda... a room already. Don't let her, <laughs> don't let her fool you. <laughs> so, like, integrating, you know, into our new life together and just settling into married life. We cooked our first dinner together, and... Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's fun. We're we're learning about each other. I've already told them to put this toilet seat down several times. No, and Gypsy, <laughs> it'll never end. It you will constantly end. have to tell them. Pounding. Let's hope that you know the toilet seat is the toughest issue that they deal with, because honestly, she's gone from uh, hell with her mother to um, hell in prison. I mean, prison life is not easy, and now she's seems like she's hit a glide path with her soulmate. Yeah, just get nine, used nine, to nine. it. Now, both of your families suggested that you wait to get married until Gypsy's release. Why did you choose not to do that? Why? What was the rush? Well, you know, with us getting married, she was able to come live with me straight out of prison. Right. So that was important. You know, that's what we both wanted. Um, you know, we didn't want to date and then, you know, she'd come out and be like, okay, I'm going three and a half hours away from where you live. I'll talk to you later. Right. So it was one of those we, we just wanted to you know people that's that is actually an issue because if uh if they didn't get married in all likelihood she wouldn't have been allowed to to live with him because you've got strict conditions on what you can do and what you can't do when you get out of prison it's called parole it's called intensive supervision Ooh. did want us to wait some but it was one of those where we knew what we wanted to do mm -hmm. and, you know and it's, it's you know she's never got to live her life before so it's one of those where, you know, our parents were like, well, let's let her live it. And that's what they did. But understandably so, if you're living your life really for the first time, did you, was there not a part of yourself that wanted to do it alone, independently? I, I think that spending eight and a half years in prison, all I was was alone. Yeah. 
and I was tired of sleeping in a bed by myself. I was tired of feeling like I had no one to share memories with. I hope Think about how alone she was with her mother as well. You know, that isolation is one of the hallmarks of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. The control that you have to have in order to perpetuate your illness and to feed, you know, that demon inside you is, uh, it, it's really amazing, actually. Ryan, how are you dealing with the newfound fame and being in the spotlight? It's different. I'm a very private person. Uh, you know, I'm a teacher, so it was one of those where I didn't want my school involved or any of my kids, but it, it's, it's been different. I knew... I can't imagine being a professional like that, be a professional teacher, and writing to a prison to get a wife. I just... <laughs> and, but in all fairness, you know, people can meet in the strangest ways. People can meet on Instagram, people can meet online, people can meet, you know, like this. And if they found happiness, you can find happiness anywhere. You can be in different countries and still get along, you know. And, you know, if it's love and it's going to work, it's going to work. Who I married, you know, is one of those where we talked long and extensively about it. You know, she was like, are you sure? Are you sure? And of course I was. I mean, I'm in love with this girl. Mm -hmm. So it was one of those where it was not even, you know, it wasn't even a question. I was like, yeah, I'm going to marry you, you know. Mm -hmm. I knew I was going to marry you from the first moment I met you and talked to you, maybe. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those I fell in love with the moment I heard voice. One of the things that probably is part of that relationship is there was probably a lot of correspondence between them ahead of time. As opposed to, you know, the first boyfriend who killed her mother on their second date. <laughs> so hopefully she doesn't convince him to kill anybody else. So that's Gypsy Rose. And God love her. You know, um, I hope she's happy. And I hope she's found happiness with her man, as she put it. Sometimes murder, not murder, but sometimes taking a life is justified. So, for example, you're in your home and a burglar comes in armed and you shoot the burglar. Justified, right? And sometimes it's not justified. Sometimes, you know, uh, a husband beats his wife to death because he's just a prick. Uh, not justified, right? Well, this, to me, this falls in kind of a gray area. I, do I think that the mom needed to die? Not necessarily, but she was so helpless and powerless against her mother. And so her thinking was a little messed up. I don't advocate killing anybody. In fact, you know, why do you think I don't hunt? I, don't, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't kill a flea. But I'm always packing, never lacking. And uh, you come in my home and defending your family, that's a, a different thing. But calculating somebody's death, which is what this was, is a completely different story. And it does seem a little lopsided to have her only do eight years and the man who was trying to save her from her mother do life. I mean, he probably could have done this a little differently and stabbing the shit out of her. <laughs> I, I don't know how. I, I don't advocate that. But but she did serve a long sentence of abuse and prison. And I think that's enough. That's my opinion anyway. So we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Make sure you smile to everybody around you. Make sure you uh, subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Find us on Facebook too. We're also on Facebook. And then you uh, uh, sign up for Patreon. And we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. But before we go, make sure you, you visit our sponsors, eSign.com and Step One. Get some. I'm part of Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23-hour lockdown, please, is that my goal?